Okay, I think we just start. It's nine or past nine even, 30 seconds we already lost. Uh, so, and we have a tough schedule, so um, we need to speed up a little bit, I guess. So let me just start my slideshow here. Um, yeah, so that's the fifth annual high performance container workshop today. We have a full day, full of content. So as said, we need to speed up a little bit. Uh, I will record everything. Hopefully everything will work. Last time it didn't, but this time I'm pretty confident that it will. Um, so, and this also to, that's not only to put it on YouTube at the end of the day, but also to help the uh, speakers just put in slides that have links to other resources and people can pick them up afterwards and you don't have to uh, yeah, take notes and, and make sure that you get everything. So make sh like, hopefully it will be on YouTube and I'm pretty confident it will. So then you can just um, connect and, and, um, and yeah, enjoy the workshop. So um, this time we would like to have a very comprehensive uh, overview of all things containers. Uh, and it's of course about the audience. So if you have questions, just uh, shoot. Um, we have very short segments or the, the segments, we have five segments and I will show them in a bit. Um, and everyone, like in the first one, in this introduction one, every speaker will have the opportunity to just uh, have the about me and about my company slides out of the way so that in the other sections we can just not talk about this anymore and we can just go to the content. That's the idea. Um, so that's my about me slide. I used to work at uh, yeah, various companies like Docker and some startups and PlayStation and so on. And in a couple of weeks I will join AWS. And there we are with um, Burak. Where's Burak? There he is. Yeah. And the, that's like this introduction thing. At the end of the introduction, I will talk about the workshop in more broader terms. And you need a mic. Before I can be loud. No, that's not on the recording, Burak. All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Burak Kenyar. I'm with UberCloud. Um, I've been um, in high performance computing since uh, 2012. And uh, the, um, uh, the, the passion that I've been going after has been finding a way to get high performance computing in the hands of people who cannot get access to high performance computing. Um, who here works at an HPC center? Yeah, you guys are the lucky ones. You realize that, right? So a lot of people wait in front of slow computers. The, um, the numbers are such that, for example, in computer-aided engineering, um, about 50% of all engineers still use a desktop computer to run simulations. And um, you can imagine the pain that they go through as they wait. Um, I, I have colleagues who tell me that their simulations take five days to run and they can't even check email during that period. So um, that, that's been my passion, finding ways so that um, engineers especially can get to high performance computing. Um, uh, we started um, at, at a uh, national lab in California, Lawrence Livermore, and um, ran a number of experiments with Intel. That's that's when the concept of containerization was just starting to get a get a foothold. Um, we'll talk about history of containers quite a bit in depth today, um, and. Um, uh, over time, I, I took the, the concept of containers to the extent where we can now run containers in the cloud, give engineers the ability to run high-performance computing um, in, a, in a cloud setup. Um, and this is our chest thumping slide. Um, we're great. We a bunch of awards, and um, the, th this community has been has been amazing. Um, I, I I ran in. Um, I worked in other segments such as financial services, but in in high performance computing area, I find that the community is very strong. Like you guys are all here, and we can collaborate and move things forward uh, over a number of years. So it's it's great to be it's great to be here. Uh, the reason. Reason why I like containers has been um, I realized that in uh, technical computing, one of the problems we always run into is getting code from one place to another. Um, high performance computing or technical computing codes are very complex, and to me, containers mean portability. So that's the um, the glass that I'm always looking through. And I'm not just talking about moving binaries; I'm talking about moving user experiences. So I like to run an entire desktop GUI inside of a container. 
crypto. Um, I'll, I'll be talking a lot more about that. And um, the Uber Cloud containers, which we developed over the years, um, have full graphical user interfaces running with GPUs underneath, um, where you can see your 3D geometry as an engineer, do pre-processing, post-processing, and with a lot of compute cores in the back. So imagine the head node is, is a container, and the compute nodes are containers in the back as well. So we can run MPI jobs across them. And uh, that's, um, that's what a Uber Cloud container uh, looks like um, in a nutshell. At the very bottom, we usually use um, Docker runtime. So um, I'll, I'll bring that um, uh, to the table today. We can talk a lot more about uh, Docker. And I have other colleagues here who will cover other runtimes. Um, we um, we also have a, a HPC layer. Uh, so this is this is the layer which makes MPI possible. For example, again, um, this is quite unique. We we like to put MPI uh, related um, tasks inside the container as well. So um, when we go into a compute environment and launch an Uber Cloud container, we are using the MPI that we brought which is kind of interesting. Um, a lot of people think of MPI being part of the infrastructure. We believe it's a part of the user application, the engineering application. So we like porting it inside of a container. So we can talk about the benefits or um, negatives of that. Um, and also in, in the base layer here, you can see that um, we like to bring the operating system uh, related components. So we are expecting very, very little from the host operating system. To us, the host operating system is simply where the uh, volume mounts are. So that's where the storage is presented. And that's where the kernel lives. And then we expect very little else from the host operating system. We bring everything else. Obviously, if you're in an HPC center, you have a lot more supporting you. You have, an, you have MPI running. You have a LDAP server. You have storage already hooked in. but. I take a lot of engineers to the cloud where I should not have expectations about what's underneath. So we like to transport a lot of that. Um, so again, we can discuss that. And in our containers, we present engineering applications. That's what the application layer there is all about. So when an Uber Cloud container is switched on, the entire engineering application is all there. Um, so any, any questions? That, um, that I can answer. Go ahead. Oh, question at the end. OK. Um, so uh, I'll, I, I won't go through the rest of my slides. We, we like to run Uber Cloud containers on just about any orchestrator. Um, th this slide talks about um, Kubernetes, for example. I think this year there will be a little more Kubernetes in the conversations. So we'll touch on those. But uh, we use other orchestrators like Grid Engine, Slurm, um, and uh, more HPC-like orchestrators as well. All right, Christian, back to you. I know you're very sensitive about time. I'm very sensitive about time. And you're, you're happy. Uh, you're lucky because I forgot to stop. I did. Oh, yeah. All right. You are lucky, actually. Thank you. So yeah, I'm sorry for like being so, also, yeah, so dictatorish. But that's how we roll. Here we go. Hi, I'm CJ Newburn, and from NVIDIA. And for the compute software part of NVIDIA, I kind of drive what we do for uh, uh, strategy and roadmap, um, especially for HPC. So uh, there are a number of things that we do. I'll talk some about some of those. Essentially, uh, Jensen, our leader, basically said, hey, why aren't more people using HPC? And kind of our conclusion was, because it's hard. And the question was, all right, what do we do that we can make it easier for that? Um, we'd like to be people to be able to scale and enjoy the benefits of scaled systems and make it easier to deploy so that things that might seem scary, ooh, GPUs, are those different? Um, or uh, when you go to put things together and taking development apps and get the, getting those to uh, work on new platforms, what are all the right ingredients? How do you make sure that the versions work together and those kinds of things? Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that today in uh, uh, a tool that we'll talk about. 
and uh, being able to compose things. One of the key trends we see is that people are not just doing traditional modeling simulation in HPC, but are combining that with data analytics and ML, uh, deep learning and visualization all together on a big platform with lots of memory uh, that can uh, sort of, you can have this mashup. So you can have the greatest hardware in the world, uh, wonderful software in an ecosystem, but if you can't go the last mile to actually make it accessible, what good does it do you? So that's kind of where uh, we've gotten involved in this. Uh, we essentially have taken a whole bunch of, on the order of 50 different kinds of applications and a variety of different application divines, uh, domains and, and put those up. And not only uh, done container images, but scripts and so on to be able to train and build these environments. Um, we're also uh, looked at tools that we can use to make this easier. We'll talk about that later today. And uh, many of you have been involved in something I started a few months ago, the HPC Container Advisory Council. Uh, so if that's something that you're interested in, we're essentially trying to identify what are the key problems that we have as a community, which ones are already solved, and what are the key next things that we need to do to address that. Uh, so we're doing this across uh, a whole bunch of different application domains, including some like smart cities and medical imaging and so on. We see that uh, there's a lot of containers that are, uh, that make sense in those spaces um, and being able to make this a whole integrated solutions work with lots of models. Here's a sampling of a number of different kinds of containers that we offer. Um, we make these uh, in variety of different flavors that you can just go and download, whether you want to start with a base layer that you can build on top of, um, or something that has a runtime that's good and ready to go, or a development environment that has uh, lots of compilers and other developer tools and so on that are in that. So that's less than my five minutes. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Less than five minutes. That's uh, what I hear a lot. I hear, like to hear. Okay. Silent. Where is Eduardo or Michael? Oh, Michael. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't have the badge, so you probably couldn't recognize me without it. <laughs> I get, do I get extra time because he didn't go his full five minutes? <laughs> I planned for it. I put I mean, ten minutes. Try to be dictatorish at the beginning, and then we can relax it. And here, the, the, the video recording ends here. So if you could stay on the other side. Okay, so stay over here. You're saying? Yeah, then you're fine. <laughs> uh, hi guys. So uh, I'm Michael Bauer. I probably know many of you. Um, I work for a company called Scilabs, and what we do is we develop the Singularity Container Runtime. So could I get a show of hands? How many people have heard of Singularity already? All right, pretty much done then, I guess. <laughs> so uh, essentially what we do as a company, uh, Greg Kurtzer, the guy who created Singularity about three and a half, four years ago, um, he kept getting a lot of people asking, hey, I need to do containers, I need to do containers. Uh, we created Singularity, and then all of a sudden, Singularity took off, it exploded in the HPC world, and people started coming to Greg from all across the world, and they said, hey, uh, we need support, we want this feature and that feature and you know whatever else uh, feature or uh, container help that they needed and so he formed a company. Uh, and so, so what we do at Scilabs essentially we provide licensing, enterprise level support, professional services, uh, we provide some cloud functionality, on-prem functionality, and we also just drive the open source project development of Singularity. Yeah, so uh, one of the really interesting things we're doing, like I said, people were coming to Greg all the time and they were saying, hey, can you help support Singularity? So we provide a pre-packaged, pre-built, uh, binary version of Singularity called Singularity Pro. We sell it for dirt cheap to people in academia because that's where we came from. Uh, we support it, we you know backport security fixes, that kind of thing. Uh, and then the other thing that we offer is what, what we call the Singularity Container Services. That's, that's kind of the, the cloud functionality that we're building out. Uh, we want to offer people basically uh, something similar to you know, NVIDIA GPU Cloud or similar to uh, Docker Hub, but for Singularity native SIF images, essentially. So we call that the library. Uh, it's actually live. It's, it's ready to go. You can go use it for free. It's at cloud.scilabs.io. Um, also another sort of differentiator with Singularity is you can sign your images with PGP. And so we offer a service that's totally free. It basically is a key management platform just to distribute your key material, or your public key material rather. 
And then also one of the other problems with singularity uh, usage that we see people facing in HPC is the fact that you need to be root to build your container images. Uh, a lot of people maybe don't have root on a Linux, or they don't have a Linux laptop rather. Maybe they don't want to spin up a VM. Maybe they don't want to go into the cloud and spin up a VM. Uh, you're definitely not going to get root on your HPC system. So we essentially provide a service. I see a couple of people smiling and nodding at that one. Yeah. Um, so we provide a service to allow unprivileged users to build uh, singularity images with root inside of a, a little VM, uh, isolated VM environment that we spin up. Also available uh, right now, cloud.scilabs.io. Again, totally free. You can just go use it and play with it. Uh, we really hope it's solving a problem. That's pretty much all I wanted to talk about in the intro section. Yeah. I like my speakers already. One minute saved. Are there any questions at the end then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Is that on working? Hi. Uh, so I'm Arthur Petitpierre, uh, HPC Specialist Solution Architect for AWS. And I'm super happy that Christian will join us very soon. Uh, so that's good. I've been working in the HPC world since, well, a while now, uh, probably almost 15 years. And apart from doing HPC in the cloud, I also uh, sometimes carry snowballs, which are our uh, mobile storage things uh, on a bike in Paris. Um, AWS, well, we are a cloud provider, small one. Uh, we do operate across a few regions, um, some, some data centers, let's say. Um, I've regularly had the question during this week about what our regions are. Our regions are a collection of data centers where you have lots of resources where you can do HPC, among other stuff. Um, we have a broad range of services that you can leverage to run HPC workload. Um, for the, the, the container crowd, one of them is AWS Batch, and I'm going to speak about AWS Batch later today. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, okay, I will not use the timer anymore. I mean, you are so disciplined. Everybody is really running. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So hi, my name is uh, Dror Goldenberg. Uh, I lead the software architecture at uh, Mellanox, and uh, this. Um, Lightning talks. I, I I must admit this is my first time doing this lightning talk, so I think it's a nice concept. But I thought, you know, what can I tell about a 20 years old company um, in five minutes? So I thought I'll maybe start from uh, the story of myself, and I want to take you back a little bit more than 15 years ago into 2003, where I met this uh, crazy professor at uh, Virginia Tech, Srinidhiv Radhajan, and he had this crazy idea of uh, building a supercomputer and uh, I think something wrong is happening here. Or just cancel? Yeah. Okay, so this uh, crazy professor has, uh, has this crazy idea of uh, building a supercomputer by taking like off the shelf workstations, maybe hot from the oven from, from Apple and hooking them together with some uh, off-the-shelf uh, interconnect. So it, pretty much you can see me on the right-hand side in, with uh, like the prototype that of, of the G5 uh, Apple coming uh, right uh, fresh from the oven and trying to assemble it and actually make it work. And uh, you can see us a couple of months later in uh, the supercomputer that they, they actually built. And I think that was really impressive because it really changed the way people are building supercomputers. And actually managed to, and together we managed to, to get into uh, the, the top three super, supercomputer with that System X. And uh, it was really amazing But because this supercomputer was built at the fraction of a cost of any other system that was out there. So this is how uh, Mellanox started getting into uh, v strongly uh, into the high performance computing space. And ever since we've been innovating and enhancing and adding features and adding a lot of functionality to really uh, lead in that uh, supercomputer networking. 
And here in this conference, um, um, we're really proud because um, we now are leading the first uh, number one supercomputer as long as also with the number two and number three and several others in the top uh, uh, top 10 supercomputers. Uh, we have about six uh, supercomputers there. Uh, we provide all the networking um, uh, equipment for those supercomputers, uh, anywhere from the uh, NICs that we also call, call them HCAs, the switches, the cabling, and also a lot of software both to manage those clusters and also uh, HPCX software pack that provides all the uh, middleware and everything. And um, basically, we have all the solution that is really required to deploy the networking at those uh, supercomputers at very large scale, anywhere from connectivity and innovative technologies to hook together those computers and get all the I.O out of those servers to the network. Um, we then have unique technologies around the networking and the transport, a lot of offload that we're doing in order to free CPU cycles, uh, recovery of um, faults in the network, which is really important at large scale, adaptive routing, and many other technologies. On top of that, uh, we provide all the middleware that is needed, including uh, also transparent offload uh, using our fabric services, uh, and all the application uh, just run on top of that and really enjoy the best uh, performance uh, of our interconnect. And I can show you some uh, numbers here. Uh, you can see very good network utilization, being able to scale to a very, very large scale with 96% of network efficiency. Uh, be able to offload operation into the network with flat latency and being able to get about 7x uh, better performance uh, of data reduction. Um, be able to improve deep learning um, scaling by a factor of two. Be able to recover from network faults 5,000 5, times faster than the traditional way to recover from faults. And obviously, we also have their nice roadmap to go. Uh, today, we're shipping uh, uh, HDR 200 gig, and we're approaching and, and leading uh, with that and keep adding uh, more speeds to enable you always to really scale out uh, very nicely. So before I, I, I end, uh, I have more 15 seconds. I see you're, you're checking eagerly. Yes, yeah, so everybody is uh, changing all the time, and I think Melanox has been going through a really nice journey throughout the years, and supercomputers are being built now differently, and uh, there is a lot of look into being able to provide the supercomputing in a more like a cloud fashion and containerized. And I think this uh, workshop is really appreciated so that we can take all those workloads that traditionally run on bare metal now and run them in a clouded environment. Thank you. Thank you, Dora. I think Valentin's next. Here we go. And I will just kill the kill iTunes so that it's not getting in the way. Thanks. Here we go. So, good morning, everybody. My name is Valentin Rothberg. I'm working for Red Hat in the container runtimes team. So I'm not really an HPC person, but I'm sure I will learn something about that today. And I'm happy to be here. Thanks, Christian, for the invitation. So I came here today to talk about basically Red Hat's containers philosophy and what we are working on on everything below Kubernetes. So today I will not be talking about products, but about open source projects. I will not be talking about Kubernetes or OpenShift, but the layers below them, because this is where I'm at. Basically from Kubernetes down to the kernel. So at Red Hat, as much as for many other places and vendors, everything started with Docker, right? At the beginning, they were using LXC, then it gradually, gradually increased and was extended to support more use cases. And step by step, it turned into a big Swiss army knife, which is great because by using Docker, you can fit a lot of use cases. You can support basically today everything from the desktop to the server to Kubernetes because there's Docker shim to translate between the APIs. But after a while, um, especially when the OCI came up 
and things became more standardized, uh, Red Hat rethought what a container runtime or an engine could look like. Because when using Docker, right, you can fit a lot of use cases, but it's hard to get into specialized things. And actually, the picture here is a real Swiss Army knife. It has dozens of features, and it weighs around a kilogram, and it costs around $1,300. So I'm not making advertisement for, <laughs> for a Swiss Army knife here at the moment. But I'm, what I'm trying to illustrate is when you want a one-size-fits-all solution, it comes at a cost. So the container engine or runtimes philosophy at Red Hat is that no one-size-fits-all solutions, basically, we want to have. We want to have dedicated and specialized tools, and they should be compatible. Compatible among each other, but also backwards compatible. So when users from Docker come over and want to use the runtimes that I'm going to talk about today, they should work. The images should work. Everything should work as expected. So Red Hat is a fully open source company. So everything should be based on open standards. Everything is developed in the open. There is no proprietary version. Everything that ends in the enterprise products is first upstream on GitHub. And there should be a certain degree of interoperability. Now, this is a somehow loosely defined term, um, but what I mean by that is that the tools that are developed and that I'm going to present later should be composable in a way that if I use tool A and combine it with tool B, I'm able to to basically fit more use cases and that they're able to exchange containers, images, and so forth. So one of these tools is Cryo. I'm not going to present Cryo in later talks. That's why I'm going or edit it here to sneak it in. <laughs> Sneaky me. <laughs> So Cryo is an OCA-based container runtime, and the only use case of Cryo is Kubernetes. Nothing more, nothing less. And I chose this now because it pretty much illustrates the philosophy of um, the tools um, from Red Hat. Um, it joined in April this year the CNCF as an incubator project, which was a pretty big deal for us because it gives a lot of visibility. It also somehow implies a certain a degree of maturity, and we were very, very happy and still are about that. Cryo supports all OCI-compatible container images, including the Docker formats, so schema 1 and 2, to remain backwards compatible. It supports any kind of container registry and all, con or all OCI-compatible container runtimes, such as RunC, Kata containers, GVisor, and so on. Okay, I gotta hurry a little bit. It has around, or it has more than 100 uh, contributors, more than 90 releases. Every PR upstream has to pass uh, over 1,500 tests, including the Kubernetes end-to-end -end tests. So we make sure we're not regressing on anything. It's uh, a collaboration across the industry, including Red Hat, SUSE, Intel, IBM, and Lyft. And Later, during the workshop today, I will be talking about the other three tools, mainly Scopio for image distribution, Podman for managing containers and pods, Builder, a specialized tool for building containers, all share the same libraries and are developed at the github.com uh, containers projects. And as I mentioned before, it's a collaboration across the industry. That's pretty much it. Yeah, you, you see me pretty relaxed because we are ahead of time. That's pretty nice. Oh, I can talk more if you want. No, 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 no. And, and, <laughs> and I, I just wanted to, to get this first section like, that, sh that just jumped into uh, so that we can get out of, yeah, can get this out of the way. Uh, but as I said, I mean, we are ahead of time, so we, we still have some time left. So if people have questions, uh, regarding the introduction piece, we can even have a little panel about that. So if people feel free, uh, if people have questions about the companies, then we can first use the sketch box, which I will also talk about later. So everyone who wants to ask a question has to have the catch box. Otherwise, it won't be on the recording. So Marshall, you don't have a question? Who, are, who has a question? Or maybe just try out the microphone then. Here we go. 
This is a test. This is a test. It works. Okay, cool. So everyone who wants to talk needs a catch box. Okay, and I this time around I tried to slice the workshop a little bit differently, and uh, because the last times and I the the Wi-Fi is not working, so all my networking using applications they complain about certifications. So it shut up. So the last couple of times, this is the fifth workshop that I'm, I'm hosting at the ISC about containers. And uh, the last times we always had like 40 minutes, 45 minutes or 30 minute talks. And people were touching on all the stuff like throughout the talk. So we had people talk about runtime, build, distribute, and everything was mixed, uh, meshed together, merged together. And the, um, the focus was mostly on one of those segments, but it was, of course, uh, a big mix of all the things. And I think for an audience, it was always confusing at times where people had five different talks with different focus, but they all talked about the same thing uh, or the, used the same vocabulary for different contexts. And I think this time around, um, I wanted to make this easier and palatable for the audience so i chunked it up into different segments so first we will talk about the runtime so portman uh, singularity built uh, docker d and so on um, and we will stick with this runtime model so if someone talks about kubernetes during the runtime then he gets a slap on his wrist or maybe i throw the catch box or whatever so we stay in the segments and we also don't talk about build in runtime so we try to make it very precise and and not confuse people uh, the further we get along the segments then we can mix them together of course orchestration we also have to talk about runtime so if something was already talked about then i'm okay if we talk about other segments that we already talked about but please don't talk about stuff that is not talked about yet so first thing is about runtime the second one is about builds so docker build singularity build uh, builder and so on so what can we do to create an image and um yeah and 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 make it maybe name it so that we can reuse it Third thing, a third segment is about distribution. So once I build this image, how do I get it to the runtime and how do I make sure that people can reuse it? Um, and uh, yeah, and, and how, how is this distribution thing work? Oh, how does it work? Fourth is orchestration and scheduling. So we talk about Swarm, Kubernetes, HPC schedulers, and uh, also some, some other, other things. So this, I think, is a very big like segment let's see how how much we can uh, go plow through it and at the end we will talk about hpc specific stuff so we'll talk about luster and s3 and and other things and uh, then at the very end we talk about use cases and then we have an open discussion and conclusion and a long panel that we can uh, talk about where we can talk about all the things that we talked about before so as said I'm happy that we are like ahead of time because I'm pretty much, I think I know that at the end we will like need more time than we have. So if we can save some time at the beginning, that will benefit us at the, at the end. Um, so the segment structure is we will have kick or a little lightning talks around five minutes each that kicks off the segment and introduce the technology that the speaker wants to talk about. Then we have an extensive panel, like half an hour or 20 minutes in some cases, only 15 because we have so many speakers there. But um, yeah, we try to open it up and, and have an extensive panel there. It's not that uh, we have a fixed panel. So if someone is very passionate and thinks he needs to talk about something or he wants to get something out of his chest, then, uh, then feel free to just volunteer as a panelist. Um, it should be, as I said in the beginning, it should be about the audience. It should be about what you guys want to talk about. And it's not about the panelists only simmering in their own soup, right? So we, we need engagement as well. And as I said, there's the catch box. Um, and uh, if and it, it's also, of course, not only due to the recording, it's also to introduce some discipline around the, <laughs> among the audience. Um, so otherwise, people will shout. So please wait until you have the catch box. And that's basically the first intro section. And as I said, I mean, we are so much ahead of time. We have like 20 minutes left. <coughs> I guess we will just start with the next segment if there is no need to talk about the introduction segment. Or does anyone have, as I said, any questions about the different... Oh, here we go. 
Yeah, not yet. I, I was planning to uh, put them on the website uh, before, but as it always goes, I hadn't had the time somehow. But yeah, I will put them maybe in the in the um, in the in the break. I will put them on the website and then add another link so that we can uh, that can see the the slides. And that's also a good hint to that's that's our agenda here. It's on knipdoc ic and as you see, we have like uh, 10, well, the, the next section, section was supposed to start at 10, so we have 25 minutes, uh, we are 25 minutes ahead of time. Oh, we, will just, we will just go ahead with the runtime then. And uh, yeah, you can follow the agenda, loosely follow the agenda here on this website. Yes. Yeah, you forgot the catchbox thing. But uh, yeah, I mean, you're right. I, first, we have a Slack channel, and I think I didn't put this on the uh, on the slide as well. The Slack channel. No, the Slack channel. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe. Um, so there is a Slack if you want to follow. It's IC HPCV 2019. Uh, like it, above here. A short link because it's a it's kind of a long link. Yeah, but you can you can go to slack.com and then search for it, right? ISC minus HPCV. Uh, put, put my email address up top. Ah, yeah, I don't have internet yet. So, so we created a Slack for uh, here. I'll get the microphone or whatever. You know. <laughs> I'll put it by the rules. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Marshall Michel. Uh, my email address is Marshall Michel N A. R T I A L M I C H E L. Just type my email, uh, Christian, uh, and then I'll send you an invite for the uh, Slack channel for the uh, for the meeting. Uh, it's a long, it's a long URL. I thought we were creating a short URL. But I'll it. Yeah, but it's not that long, right? It's just you go to Slack and then you have to you you have to enter your work your work uh, place. You have to be, uh, ah, okay. Come on, internet. Okay, here we go. And you cannot just. Ah, okay, I will. So, what's your. Yeah, or you maybe you write it there, or someone writes it there. Should I write it there? But I have a, my, my handwriting is very bad. So, like, what is it again? Marshall. First name, last name, at the machine. Marshall. Just without a dot or something? Michael at data machines. But I mean also dot com. Dot io. .io. But I mean, we have breaks, and maybe guys yeah, can just drop their um, their business cards. And um, yeah, so I can just invite you. Yeah. But it's yeah. Let's see. 